over the course of the last sort of two to three years, we've been working with our seven day sort of work streams to try and improve our seven day availability. Our service has, as it's fair to say, evolved over the past sort of seven to eight years rather than radically changed. Um, if you go to other large organisations that are at the same scale as ours, they've approached it very differently. And in some cases, they have instigated a very rapid and um, uh, rather major change in the way seven days working has impacted on their staff and how they've delivered services across the hospital. Um, I suppose just to give a back, bit of background up until about pre-2010, 2011, really our pharmacy service at the weekend was very, very limited. Um, it was very much revolved around a kind of classic uh, supply model, so we will receive uh, requests to pharmacy and we will supply them um, and look at those um, on an individual basis as best we can in locked in the confines of our pharmacy department. Um, we don't really like working that way because it doesn't really give us the opportunity to look at the patient factors that are involved in making decisions about medicines and it also means that we're pretty much locked away from those people that would want to just get a bit of face-to-face -face advice and a bit of information. It also makes us very difficult for patients to speak to us if we're locked behind um, doors uh, and so patients may wish to ask advice on a Saturday or a Sunday just as much as they might, might want to ask advice on a, week, on a weekday and I actually to be fair I suspect a lot of them have their relatives visit at the weekend and a lot of questions are, are brought up over weekend periods when they're sitting with their relatives. There's almost undoubtedly the Monday to Friday effect which most trusts will feel in terms of Mondays and Fridays are a lot busier and everyone's um, struggling to deliver seven days worth of work in five days essentially. Um, and so there is there is that to take away from from the team, um, and actually one of the things we have to bear in mind is that we all are, we all understand that you know it's patients that we're focusing on here, and that realistically they shouldn't be waiting an extra two days for us to see them when they're newly been admitted to hospital. I wouldn't want that to happen to my family. So we've had an incremental change to our service, really to make sure the supply functions still were still maintained. Fundamentally, patients, if they're prescribed medicines, need to receive those medicines in a timely fashion, so we have to do that. Um, and then we start to branch out, say, from about 2014 onwards, where we start to see some ward-based services, some areas of the hospital looking a bit differently about how they use pharmacists. The first one of those was prob <clears throat> probably the surgical day unit service, where they had a pharmacist working in the morning there to review patients and write the first prescription chart. Um, this was because it meant that then that could free up doctors to be within the surg surgery or do other tasks. And that was pati particularly successful in terms of, um, at the time, we were looking at whether pharmacists were safe undertaking those types of tasks. Uh, I think that's pretty much sorted now, and we've got the evidence to suggest that pharmacists, on average, when you look at medicines-related errors, make around sort of the 0.4 to 1% mark um, of errors. Um, that's for a multitude of reasons, but partly because we're focusing on the medicines and very much are focused on those particular aspects around that particular part of care, whereas doctors and other health professionals have got to look at a broader context. Um, so in terms of where we're at now, um, we're a full electronic prescribing trust, so that's pretty useful to bear in mind. That's one difference about our hospital that other trusts will struggle to replicate if they haven't got electronic prescribing. So we have support for that prescribing system 24-7. Uh, we have uh, on-call service, which is 24-7, which most trusts would have as well. We have the supply service, which is kind of 9 to 5, with a real focus between 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock um, on discharges, so kind of more skeleton service. Um, and then we have the surgical day unit service in the mornings on the Saturdays, to review charts, not yet extended onto Sundays because surgical dean it doesn't open on a Sunday, so otherwise I think that would have occurred. And then we have um, a medicine service which is kind of linked to the out of hour service which um, Dr. Kaus and I worked upon, where there's the availability of a pharmacist within the multidisciplinary team of the out of hour service uh, for both advice for, and more importantly for us to start looking at which tasks could we take off other health professionals because we have the expertise to deal with those independently and autonomously. Over the course of an entire weekend, we're still, the flow across the organisation in terms of discharges is still on the lower side. Um, we're really a responsive service, so as other areas ramp up, we have to kind of respond to that. 
Um, so over the entire weekend, we're seeing sort of 70 discharges now. So sort of if you split that 50-50, that would be sort of 35, 36 per day. On an individual Monday or Tuesday, we'd see 110. So that's already kind of puts things into, con into context. Um, and then in terms of just the kind of supply function, uh, we will see sort of around kind of 800 dose units supplied by our farm sales, 800 um, <coughs> supplies made over a weekend, whereas on an individual day we'd probably see about 1,700, 1,500 to 1,700. So we're a pretty busy pharmacy department and you can see how that tails down over the weekend in terms of activity. Um, I pointed out that the surgical day unit service provided some a good foundation of the starting points for saying that pharmacists could write the first prescription. Um, and then our medical out of hours service has seen, uh, seen an improvement in our medicines reconciliation rates, which is the rate where pharmacists take a focus on reviewing the first prescription to make sure all medicines related changes are conscious and communicated amongst the team. So people's uh, medicines on admission, if we've stopped something or omitted something, it's for a particular reason rather than it being an omission uh, because we weren't aware of how the patient was taking it or how the, it was prescribed. Um, and I think we've also seen a large, um, a, a fairly reasonable number of resolution of problems with patients directly with them discussing, having the availability of someone who's focused on the medicines, but also around identifying certain pharmacy issues that the delay over a weekend perhaps would have made the person, the patient stay in a bit longer. Um, they may very well be uh, straightforward things because there's a skeleton team on over the weekend, but actually bringing the expertise of someone with medicines focus really supported and helped that. Um, it's one of the big challenges for me as a manager of a large team of highly specialist pharmacists. Probably almost 40% of my staff have a very, uh, would consider themselves to be highly specialist in their nature. Um, and make, well, reorganising it so that they do more generic tasks at the weekend takes their availability from the working week because that's how it's working in, in reality is that their availability during the week reduces um, and, it may, and actually they're not, as you can imagine, they're not particularly enamoured with that. They've, you know, they've worked very hard to, um, to train themselves to a high degree in a particular area. Uh, so you, you could think about things like paediatric oncology or um, neonatal parental nutrition. These are highly complex areas where actually the clinical teams really value their input because they've come with that focus and the risks in those areas are very high. So to remove those people from the week to, to up until this point, provide a um, very sort of supply-based function, which isn't really in keeping with the kind of expertise they've got, is not something they're particularly been pleased about up until now. Um, I think one of the, thing that the things that we realise is, is that now, uh, moving forward, our next steps will be about trying to release more people to work at ward level at weekend by backfilling them with different skill mixes, other highly trained individuals so that they can take on more of the supply function, some of our technical staff, our technicians, who um, have, have up until now been used throughout the NHS to kind of backfill pharmacists so they can go in, on and do things. Uh, and that, that's been received in a, in a better way, I think, in the sense that they uh, will be delivering at the weekend some of the aspects, if not all of them, but some of the aspects of their specialist.